Hello and welcome. In the previous video, I showed you the demo of the checkout page, the cart page. So I explained to you how you can do add to cart and then how you can go ahead and view the cart like so and then proceed to checkout as well as uh, you know how to fill up this and on the checkout page when we process the order by selecting any of the payment uh, how the order is processed and I also explained about different queries that we can uh, write for the add to cart and checkout etc so in this video we're going to talk about uh, all of the codes that is required to achieve that so just to remind you that this this uh, store that you see over here is basically a WooCommerce store in React and uh, I'm using the Next.js framework and I'm also using GraphQL to fetch the data from WordPress WooCommerce okay so I have a WooCommerce uh, in WordPress already installed that I'm going to fetch all of the data from there so I explained to you about I gave you a demo of the checkout page how the order is processed and we are fetching all of the data from our WordPress uh, site which is here and we are getting all of the data using GraphQL okay so GraphQL query brilliant so in this video we're going to start from the code part of it and um, this is I think the 26th uh, this is this is actually the 27th video in the series so if you go to courses uh, react and then WooCommerce so if you have been following along my tutorials right from the beginning then I think you no longer are a beginner because uh, you know I've explained to you how all, all of these features work and uh, we are on the 27th of video so I'm going to go ahead and just explain the code to you and not really do live coding here because by this time I feel that you're in a great shape uh, to go ahead and understand what's going on and if not then you can always go back and check the previous videos where I've explained in detail I've done the live coding for all of these videos and I've explained how all of these things work awesome so let's continue so I'm going to start with the home page so let's go to the code and I'm going to go to pages index.js okay so what are we doing over here let's take a look so this is my component index okay and uh, it's got layout so layout I've already explained to you earlier that inside of layout what we are doing is basically uh, we are passing the head as well as the the link for bootstrap as well as my style sheet the font awesome etc okay so you've got style sheet of boots bootstrap the font awesome etc over here and then we are also passing the Apollo provider okay so let me show you what that is we've created the Apollo client okay so over here we are creating the Apollo client okay so this is my client and I'm passing the link as I'm passing my link for the GraphQL so this client config.graphql basically is the URL okay so this is my URL for where my graph where my WordPress site is and my all of my endpoints are available as slash GraphQL okay and then this is for uh, cache this is a fragment matcher I've already explained in the previous video you can go and check out okay and then you also pass fetch over here and then inside of this you're also passing this as middleware so there is a middleware that you can see over here and there's also an afterware right so there are two of them so so what you're doing is you're passing middleware so if you take a look here okay so we're creating new Apollo link and then what we are doing over here is that we are getting the information uh, of the WooCommerce session uh, from the local storage okay so what happens is that when you go ahead and do add to cart from here uh, a request is made and uh, we are using the add to cart query and then it goes ahead and that query returns a session token okay 
and that session token uh, is returned from the WordPress uh, server and that session, that session is actually stored in the WordPress database on the uh, WordPress site server okay and it returns that token and you're going to save that token over here set item in the afterware right so in the afterware you are actually setting the WooCommerce session okay when you do uh, add to cart and when we get that information in the local store and when we get the uh, WooCommerce session ID okay so here we are checking if it's available then go ahead and store that value in the session then do the set context and set this session in the header so that whenever the next request is made that session token is given uh, in the request so that it can understand okay this is the card that I'm referring to and uh, this is the card data that I need to work on okay so that's what we're doing over here then we have the afterware so this caches the incoming session token So in the middle where, uh, if we have the session token in local storage, add it to the GraphQL and request a session header. And in the afterware uh, operation, this catches the incoming session token and stores it in local storage for future GraphQL request. So you can see that <coughs> it returns form forward operation and then just map through it and it get context from the uh, operation. And then over here, uh, it is getting the session from the header itself okay and if the session is available okay remove the session if the session is destroyed and update it if the session is changed okay so that's what's happening over here and then finally we pass that middleware and concat concatenate with the afterware concatenation over here okay and this is used to create the link so that is what's happening in the Apollo client and then we just ex export and uh, we just export this client over here okay and then we pass that to the Apollo provider right now if you are wondering what this app provider is so let me show that to you so over here inside of the context we are using react context uh, so that we can store the card data uh, universally which means that it's available to all the components globally okay so you must already be aware about react context if you're not you can read about it uh, so we are creating the react context passing some default value over here and it has an app provider and inside of it uh, we are using we are setting the state initial value of the cart and this actually sets the value of the cart and inside of uh, use effect what we're doing is we are getting the cart value from the local storage okay and uh, so whenever the add to cart is done we're going to store that value in the local storage and then retrieve it uh, whenever we need it okay so we are passing the data from the cart okay so let me show that to you okay inside of local storage if you check this is the next cart right let me just zoom it in so you can see you've got entire product when we did our add to cart we've got all of the product data over here so we can get this data from the local storage wherever we, whenever we want and this is the session that's been stored uh, inside of the local storage that we're storing um, inside of the Apollo client okay so then we set the cart data okay so so initially we set the card data from the local storage if it exists okay and then we return the provider and we pass the value of card and set card so we pass this function and the initial value as well okay and this is the uh, app provider that you will see over here so this is the app provider okay so that has been imported from the react context all right and this is the Apollo provider which is given from the Apollo client okay all right and then we pass the client that we've just created over here so this is the client that we created so we are passing this uh, client to Apollo provider so it's available to all of the components okay and then we also passing the Apollo hooks provider because later on when we are actually making the GraphQL queries we are going to use uh, hooks for that 
so that is why it's important you pass that so on top if you look at this we are importing a Apollo provider as Apollo hooks provider so we are actually giving it a uh, alias okay the reason for this is because we already have one Apollo provider that we are importing from react Apollo so this name cannot be the same that's why we are giving it an alias name of Apollo hooks provider which we are using over here and we are actually taking it from the Apollo react hook so we need to, we'll need to install this okay awesome so I think that's pretty much it over here that's what's going on in the layout let's go back let's close all of this and let's let's go back to the index.js right <clears throat> so then that's what we what's happening in the layout uh, then we have the categories and then we are actually getting all of the categories from over here I'm not going to explain that because I've explained the categories part uh, in the previous video we are just querying all of the categories and just you know looping through and getting the categories on top right here okay so then um, we come back to the products uh, we check if the if it has products so we need to basically make a product query so how this is done is basically in Next.js we have a method that's available called get initial props which is run both on the server as well as on the client so the benefit of this is that Yeah, so it is run both on the server as well as on the client. Okay, so the data is fetched from the server. So over here, we are just making a query. Okay, so we have created, we have written a query on top right here. Okay, and this is my, this is going to do two queries. One is the product categories. Okay, and second is, is going to get me uh, first 50 products in the list. Okay, so we have the products available over here. It's going to get 50, first 50 out of them. All right. So again, uh, I've explained all of this in the previous videos. Uh, okay, so you've got you can pick up the notes, the ID, product ID, average rating, slug, description, all of that stuff. Simple product, variable, external group product. So this is going to get me the uh, two things basically. So once this, so this is we are using async await. So once this query is resolved, uh, then we are going to get the result, and inside of the result, we are going to pass the product categories into this uh, key and products into this key okay and now we'll actually have we can now whatever is returned by get initial props is going to be available as props inside of my component which is index okay so now if I just do a console and then we check for products and product categories you will notice that we will get all of that information okay <clears throat> so just check an inspect element console there you go as you can see you've got all of the products and you've also got three categories name image all of these details are here okay that's the beauty of GraphQL you get exactly what you ask for now, from the categories, all I needed was just the ID, name, slug, and the image. I didn't need anything else. If it was REST, WooCommerce, REST API, a lot of you, you've been asking me on the uh, YouTube comment that, that you know, why, why can't I just go with uh, WooCommerce, REST API? Why do I have to use GraphQL or which one is better? So, as you can see that when I ask for categories uh, in the query that we are making, there's only one REST, uh, there's only one endpoint that's available. Uh, and that's at slash GraphQL, right? And uh, from that endpoint, if I want, I can only get ID, name, slug, and image. I don't have to get an entire data. If it was WooCommerce REST API that we were using, you would get all of the data unnecessarily, okay? So it's going to increase probably the time that it takes uh, to get that data because, uh, you know, uh, because it has to get a lot of data okay so it's not efficient and sometimes there are several endpoints that will be so in rest api uh, there would probably be several endpoints from which you need to fetch the data because uh, a specific data is not available in one endpoint you have to look for another one but in graphql just one endpoint slash graphql you get everything that you need and only what you need okay so you can see i'm asking for only these things and that's all i get awesome 
So let's continue. So that's what we're doing over here. We've got the category data, we've got the products data, and all we're doing here is just looping through it, right? Just looping through all of these details. Awesome. So let's get back. So you've understood this part. I'm going to get rid of the console from here. 